222 day, we will talk about XRP, XLM, and SHX and their ties into Google, which then all go back into PayPal. Well, arguably XRP is a type of stable coin in itself as well. Um, but um... And that right there is a part of a conversation that happened between an ex PayPal, Google, UBS, and JPM Chase employee and a Ripple employee in 2024. I always tend to connect XRP, XLM, and SHX together because they all come from the same people out of the PayPal mafia. The map here also calls out the connection into Google, which I have a clip on. And if we look at the people involved, we've got Jed McCaleb, who came out of PayPal to Ripple and then into Stellar. David Mazieres, who created the consensus protocol and who also is connected into Google. And then you've got Chris Larson involved with XRP and Sean, who has been involved with XLM and XRP before he went over to Stronghold. And Tammy Camp is not on here, but she was extremely successful at Stellar before going over to Stronghold. And the timeline of the Ripple, Stellar, and Stronghold company creation dates is pretty interesting. And I will tie that in here too. But the big thing here is that Google and Santander invested in Ripple. And that was in 2013 out of Google Ventures. Here is a little bit more about the common ties that Microsoft, the Rockefeller Foundation, Google, and have in common. Education with regard to the platform. In the spirit of open source, what we're trying to do is generate a public good that anyone can avail themselves of, uh, that there are no licensing costs associated with it. There is a robust community that's maintaining, enhancing the code base. Um, and so that's really where our funds are, are going. And in fact, we, we, we accept funding from uh, various uh, philanthropy organizations, philanthropic organizations mm -hmm. like the Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation. We also uh, uh, get funding from member companies like Google, Coil, Modusbox, Ripple, and others that um, have alignment from a technology and a mission standpoint point. Um, so, but at that point, the, the software is available to the market to use as they see fit. And mm -hmm. um, we welcome central banks to use and deploy the, the technology, but we, we actually do not fund the deployments of, of the Mojulu platform. Here on the follow the money map put together by XX and utility theory, Google, Google Ventures and Alphabet are all tied into a ton of things on here. So for example, these are all of the first and second order connections that go back into Google alone. So as far as that timeline goes, in May of 2013, Google Ventures invests in Ripple. In June of 2014, Ripple joined the Nacha Payments Innovation Alliance which goes back into SHX because Ripple is one of the key investors in Stronghold. When we look into Jed McCaleb, he's been involved in a ton of things, obviously. He quit Ripple in his active role in July of 2013, and in 2014, he co-founded Stellar that was funded by Stripe, which then connects right back into PayPal as well. In 2015, David Mazieres came in and designed what is now the Stellar Consensus Protocol. And in May of 2017, he created Lightyear.io, which also ties right into Velo as well. In October of 2017, Lightyear partnered with IBM to launch blockchain banking in the South Pacific with XLM. And that was the topic of a number of videos I did that revolved around APF, Stellar, and IBM. And I explained that timeline because 
In July of 2013, Action Factory Inc. created a DBA in California as Stronghold Technologies, which is registered under Tammy Camp. And if we look at that date, which is July 1st of 2013, that happened right before or right after Jed, McCaleb, Ripple, and XRP. And with all of the ties of SHX into XRP and XLM, it seems as if Stronghold and SHX have been part of the plan since 2013, even though they publicly explain that Stronghold was created in 2018. Here is a panel with IBM, Tammy Camp, Jed Caleb, and a guy from the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. And the important part of that is that the Federal Reserve guy asks about how they would design a digital currency for the U.S. And it just goes to show that Stellar and therefore Stronghold and Ripple, as well as IBM, are connected into pretty much every quote-unquote ISO 222 crypto coin and company and all of the connections that each of those coins and companies have. To take this back to Google, if you go on stellarbeat.io, it is one of the uh, explorers that has a lot of information on the network itself and who is running as a validator. You go down to the b bottom of the page, we see Google called out here. And an important note on here is the involvement of Block Daemon, who is a company that can run and operate nodes on behalf of other companies. And they do work with Stellar and XLM. It was one of their first protocols that they incorporated, which goes all of the way back to 2018. In 2021, they got investors such as JPM, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, and SBI, which all tie back into XRP, XLM, and SHX. As we turn to Ripple a bit more, they have a total of 30 patents, with 11 of them uh, approved right now, which is important because it shows that they are creating new products and processes and the connection back into IBM by way of the Hyperledger is extremely important because that is what connects pretty much all of the ISO 222 compliant protocols, coins, and c companies like Quant, IOTA, XDC, XLM, Casper, HBAR, and of course, XRP. Now, why is that connection as important as it is? Worldwire is obviously pretty exciting. We've, we've had lots of people approach us and, and mainly IBM about wanting to get on the Worldwire platform. We're super excited to have that become live. That right there explains that IBM actually approached Stellar about creating IBM Worldwire, not the other way around which is important because, again, it shows that these connections in between XRP, XLM, and SHX are very important because all of the companies that they are connected into are creating new products and platforms that have been talked about in terms of enterprise and institutional adoption for a very long time now. And they are the same ones that are involved at the infrastructure level in a lot of these real-time payments platforms that are coming online and that are at the core of the regulatory changes that will bring clarity on a timeline that peaks out in 2024 and 2025. Here is a page I found from IBM.com and it calls out that the IBM blockchain is built on Hyperledger Fabric which goes right back into how all of the things that touch IBM are connected back into Stellar 
and then go and connect into everything else that IBM is. So Quant, XRP, HBAR, Casper, all of those things are indirectly involved with Stellar and its consensus protocol. On the note of the Hyperledger, here is an article that calls out how Ripple was one of the first companies to propose code and technology to the, the Hyperledger p- platform itself. And that form includes institutions such as BNY Mellon, Cisco, Accenture, the DTCC, IBM, JP Morgan, R3, State Street, Swift, and Wells Fargo, which goes right back into all of the connections that Ripple, Stellar, and Stronghold have. And here is that article, which is from February 9th of 2016. So as we're talking about IBM and its platforms, we can go back to IBM WorldWire having a tie into Ripple and XRP, as well as XLM, because that has been publicly stated and it has been proven as well. IBM introduced the World Wire payment system on the Stellar network in 2018, stating that the new payment network utilized digital currency on Stellar's blockchain. Banks such as Santander and Fedor have partnered with the blockchain-based payment network Ripple that can complete cross-border transactions in a timely and transparent way. So right there, we have ties that go back into XLM and XRP. And here is an article on the Stronghold site that calls out IBM using Stronghold's network to transform payments. And we know that the Stronghold network is interoperable with the XRPL and the Stellar network too. And early on in this video, I talked about how Ripple and eventually Stronghold were connected to Nacha and ACH payments. And here it talks about how Deloitte offers full integration with Ripple and Tamenos core banking software. And here is an article that is talking about Deloitte and Stellar partnering up to provide a global payment application which is also talking about ACH and SWIFT, which go right back into Stronghold and how IBM WorldWire was used in conjunction with APFII that connected back into the UN and SWIFT. Here is a post from 2021 that is explaining how SHX is connected into XLM, which goes into IBM, which goes into cross-border settlements. And Stronghold also has their own stablecoin that at this time is not being utilized as was confirmed by Tammy Camp in the Stronghold AMA, which is actually okay, especially with all of the talk about Ripple launching their own stablecoin and because of the ties of SHX that go back into XRP, which then go back into XLM, IBM and SHX itself, as well as connections into Velo, which I talked about that go back into Lightyear, that open up the possibility of some kind of interoperability, coordination, and co-involvement of SHX, XRP, and XLM. And the interesting thing about how SHX is positioned here is because they are creating a platform where different kinds of value are held and exchanged, not just money and crypto, but stocks, bonds, and anything of value at all. Stronghold. So Tammy, do you want to lead us off and start with that? Sure. Yeah. So um, Stronghold is a a next generation financial institution that is native to the blockchain. Um, So what that means is that we um, kind of act like a 
a normal financial institution like a bank. Um, and we allow people to deposit and withdraw funds from us, whether it be fiat currencies or other stores of value like um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, and soon probably stocks and bonds and so forth. And to wrap that up, we've got Sean talking about how they have been involved with IBM for a long time in order to accomplish what Tammy Camp just explained, what Stronghold was and is concentrating on, and how that ties into XRP and XLM, especially in light of the announcement of the launch of a Ripple stablecoin. Stronghold wants to provide a better financial infrastructure that would reach both the underbanked uh, population as, as well as cater for some of the larger organizations. One of the big problems is we've introduced a, a whole heap of new currencies that people don't know how to use, uh, they don't even know what they are. What Stronghold wants to do and is doing is taking existing currencies and making those as tokens on top of blockchain technologies. So what we are now able to do is move around these units of value as though they were another cryptocurrency, but they're actually stable. They're based on a traditional sovereign currency that everyone will understand already. Stronghold and IBM have been collaborating together on the Stronghold US dollar, which is a stable coin that has been introduced into IBM's worldwide network. This particular technology is disruptive because it enables us to get payments to people in, in the middle of nowhere effectively in seconds, not hours or days as the case might be. So that's a game changer because it allows people to not have to hold their funds necessarily with the large financial institutions. And all of those connections I made were just calling out how things like XRP, XLM, and SHX are tied into not only other crypto companies and banks, but into these huge companies such as IBM and Google that then connect into everything else on earth. And especially when you look at who is involved in all of these and how they all connect back into the same exact people who come from the same exact companies, it just goes to show how connected XRP, XLM, and SHX are, not just into crypto, but into the entire financial system as it exists right now. And the new financial system that will have a blockchain infrastructure.